Um, my name is Mandy Tadek. Um, I graduated from St. Ben's in 03. Um, I started after I left St. Well, while I was in college, I worked um, as an intern for uh, a couple different places. I worked for a nonprofit for Target Market, which was a campaign um, that was funded through all the money that um, they got through the tobacco settlement. So I did media and stuff um, back kind of in the early, like early stages of when that was happening, of trying to educate people on you know not smoking and for the youth. So I started doing that and then realized I wanted to go into media because I was always following the reporters around um, when I was doing that. And then I worked as an intern for Care 11 News um, for two summers. And then when I finished there, I got a job as a reporter for the NBC affiliate. So this was right when I graduated St. Ben's um, in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And I worked there for about a year and a half, and I always tell people I made less money than I paid in tuition at St. Ben's. So that was kind of, that was hard. And I worked overnights, which I know other people on this panel are going to tell you about. So that means I worked um, 11 at night till 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. So it was, it was tough, but it was a lot of fun. And um, when I first took that job, I remember a couple of my mentors told me, like, you're going to just eat macaroni and cheese together. And that's kind of what you did. Everybody was in the same boat. You didn't have any money. And, you, you know, it was fun, though. And it was kind of like a post. It was a nice transition from college. So I did that and then left there and um, to take a job as an associate producer for Care 11 um, and to come back and still work overnights, but on their morning show. So it was a better pay, living in the cities, better, um, quickly, was lucky enough to quickly move up to producer, but still at overnights on the morning show with um, Kim and Tim, which maybe some of you watch if you stay up late, not get up and watch. I don't even see it anymore. So um, so I did that for two years, and that was a great experience. But again, it was hard, and I was like, you know, I don't know if news is my thing. And, and I guess that would be the one thing for you guys is that, you know, I mean, I went three years into my career and was like, I don't know if this is really what I want to do. And kind of took another path and was like, you know, I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life if I hate it. So um, I took a freelance job, which uh, we can ask, ask questions more, or you can ask me more questions about, because a lot of people have questions about freelance work and production um, with uh, Twin Cities Public Television and worked there for 10 months on a contract position, no benefits, good pay, no benefits, which my parents didn't like, which I see, like that there was no benefits, but got tons of experience, was lucky enough to spend three weeks in Hawaii, three weeks in um, Montana, three weeks in Bo or, um, Boston, and all over, traveled all over the country, and worked on a kid's science show, and got, kind of got a lot of field work, and really found that my passion was more in doing lifestyle television and things that made positive, you know, impact on people. And so switched gears and didn't really know what I was going to do and actually had contacted like people up at St. Ben's and was like work networking and freelancing and ended up um, getting to, getting an interview with um, my current boss um, who said, uh, we want to start a show called Twin City or we want to start an afternoon show and um, we want it to be food, fashion, and fun, something totally different. And met my current boss, never thought I'd get the job, and he hired me to start what is now Twin Cities Live um, on afternoons, weekdays at 3. And so I've been there for five years, and um, it's crazy, and it's fun, but um, yeah. So you kind of never know where you're going to end up. So that's kind of my story, and I know it's a long kind of crazy train, but yeah. So that's me. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, my name is Sean Harlan. I graduated in uh, from St. John's in 1988. Uh, I'm a little older than probably most on this panel. <clears throat> I've been with the Minnesota Twins for 20 years now. This was my 20th season. I started in uh, PR. I worked baseball communications for about 13 years. And then the Twins uh, came to me and asked me if I'd be willing to move over to the video side to kind of start out the pro getting digital video of the of the players and the coaches and uh, for kind of a training and fundamental tool. So I've been doing that for probably the last six years. Uh, how did I get to the Twins? I kind of the same path. I struggle to you know getting into professional sports is uh, is is really tough. It's a very competitive field, and uh, I, in I interned at the National Sports Center for two years, and then I was at the right place at the right time, and 
uh, got an entry level job in uh, the mailroom, started in the mailroom, and then moved to uh, assistant uh, director of public relations in about 1995, and then was the director in 96 till about 2006, and to where I'm, my present position is <coughs> video manager. Um, my, the, the panelists up here are going to have a lot more wider variety of video than what I do. What I do is basically capturing uh, players at bats, pitchers, mechanics. Um, I do a lot of advanced scouting, uh, do reports for the coaches, kind of the, the behind the scenes to trying to get a baseball game. Um, it's, it's exciting if you are doing well and if you aren't doing well, it's not very exciting as the 2011 season would, would say. But overall, it's a great job. Uh, I love working for the Twins. It's a great organization. Um, it, 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 is what, it is what it is. You can prepare and prepare all you want. Uh, what, 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 what the main thing is if the players play on the field. So from a video standpoint, when you can ask questions about, about how, I, how I capture the video, how I, I turn it into a digital format, um, it's a little bit more technical, but uh, somewhat interesting. So thanks for having me. Hi, um, I'm Justine Zerbis. I was Justine Rubendahl when I was here. I graduated in 2001. Um, I was a media or mass comm major. I started in theater. Um, they don't have a minor in that, so I didn't have a minor. I wrote for the record uh, senior year, a lot of, a lot of staff writing. Um, I couldn't tell you the name of a single article that I wrote <laughs> anymore, but um, that was mostly my senior year. When I graduated, um, about nine months after graduation, um, I got a job at Conus Communications, which is, was a media news satellite sharing service. So we were kind of like the middleman for um, getting video from one market to another market. If there was wildfires in Arizona, we took in the video and then fed it to KSTP or CARE or whoever else was asking for it. Um, and then that went out of business. Um, and kind of like Amanda said, you not don't get a lot of money when you go into this business at first, at least for sure. Um, we can talk more about that later. Um, but my husband and I then moved to Milwaukee um, for him to attend Marquette, and I got my first job at WISN, which is the ABC affiliate there, as an associate producer. That, so that was my first real TV station job. And after about eight months there, um, I started producing the weekend morning show, which is overnights, um, 11 to 7. But the morning show, the weekend morning show, went on until 10 o'clock. So I actually did like 12-hour shifts on that show. And then worked like half days during the week, like 3 a.m. to 7 on the APing on the morning show, like the weekday morning show, a couple days a week. And then um, after my husband graduated Marquette, um, there was an opening at WCCO for their weekday morning show. Um, at the time was with Bill Hudson and Karen Lee. And I applied for that, um, never expecting to get a call back, and was hired very quickly. was amazed. I was surprised. They flew me to Minneapolis, and I thought, oh, my God. This is the biggest thing ever. And huge, huge pay raise from Milwaukee to um, the Twin Cities. But still, I mean, pretty, pretty um, humble, I should say, um, in terms of, of other markets. And I was there for two years. And after the birth of my second child, decided I was not comfortable doing overnights anymore, did not want to work the 11 to 7 shift. So um, then applied for a job at Care 11 on Showcase Minnesota, which is a lifestyle, which was a lifestyles show. It was on at 11 in the morning. And I was okay with that. I was, you know, I was more interested in the production part of television, not so much uh, news, news, news. Like, I, I enjoy news. I enjoy getting the information out there. But it's not, like, some people are, are crazy rabid about news content and consume it all the time. And that's not... That's not my thing. I'm more interested in the whole production aspect of it. I do do news, but it's not um, what I live for in my job. Um, and then Showcase, I was on Showcase for about two years, and then um, the 4 p.m. show, which is a newscast at CARE 11. It's, more, um, it's a little different from the other newscasts because it has two segments that are more lifestyle segments. So we do a news block, and then we do um, cooking, um, kind of the same type of things that Twin Cities Live's Live does, but on a smaller scale. We only do like two to three minute segments um, and still news, 
news content sprinkled in there with Pat and Diana Pierce are my hosts, by the way. And I've been on that show since April of 2010. So that's where I am now, and I'm really happy. And um, I've worked for every affiliate. I've worked for ABC, NBC, and CBS. And um, 10 years out of college, I, you know, I think that's about it. We can talk more about if you have any questions later. <laughs> I'm Ethan Whitrock. I uh, work here now as a media services uh, multimedia technician, specifically stationed over at St. John's, uh, and uh, working with media services for about the past six months now. Uh, I graduated from actually St. Cloud State University back in 2009 in, the de in December, where I emphasized very heavily in uh, performing arts. In fact, I, my, my basis was English and uh, public speaking, and especially choir, and moving from choir and theater and things like that toward an interest in uh, film and from film to kind of mass communications multimedia, I moved into uh, what we have over at St. Cloud State is a, a, a UTBS television, which has become a fairly, uh, a very respectable station actually in its own right and has actually allied itself with uh, local media and things like that. But when I started there, I was a news anchor, uh, not a news anchor, but a news reporter, just simply writing certain stories and re reporting them at uh, about half way through the, the program. From these early parts, I actually moved into becoming the uh, audio director during Husky Productions, which is our Division I hockey uh, coverage. I think it's a different division now. We've been moved again. but uh, So that was covering live sports for uh, the season, I think, back in 2010. From moving in that, I moved toward uh, the general manager of UTBS. And at that point, I was actually technically in charge of an executive board that was in charge of the entire station. And what was nice about that is we had such a wide variety of students and uh, opportunities that we could offer people that it made it so that we could really kind of interlink the academics with the uh, production aspect of it of students going out into broadcasting or for that matter into uh, freelance or, or journalism or anything like that. So uh, by that point, uh, when we handed it off, or I did specifically, uh, so we had new students coming in that were taking over the executive board positions, getting those skills and ultimately moving on to those different positions. I was able to go into what I was, was kind of additionally interested in was kind of documentary or promotional video type pieces. And I made one for uh, our study abroad program over at St. Clos State, which would be our um, Anik England trip. And uh, that was an opportunity where I was able to borrow equipment from the television station that I worked with, uh, from the mass communications department I worked with, uh, and ultimately make it into an academic event so that I brought home like 24 hours worth of footage, a thesis paper, production notes, and a complete proposal on how I did it and ultimately use it as academic credit. This helped me leverage into my job that I got immediately following graduation at St. Cloud State University. I was approached by the Center for Holocaust and Genocide Education, which operates out of St. Cloud State University, and uh, they asked me since we, I had been involved in the To Be Certain of the Dawn Tour, which took place about three years ago, and in fact was St. Ben's, St. John's, and St. Cloud State University working together for a European tour which brought a Holocaust oratorio that was commissioned through Minneapolis, uh, through uh, Father Michael O'Connell and uh, the Basilica, to uh, Natsfarlis Trutov, which was a former concentration camp in, in Europe, and we performed a concert oratorio. All of this was filmed at the time, but nothing was done uh, with the film immediately following the trip. Uh, there was a small piece that was about three minutes in length, but I was hired as a writer and co-director to create um, a, a, not a, a full-length documentary, but ultimately a, a, a brief documentary about the tour, about those uh, experiences. Uh, I was president of the choir at that time, so that kind of insight as being a performer slash musician slash um, uh, also someone who's now picking up all the footage and trying to make something of it. Uh, so from that, we're uh, with a, 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 it took a very long time, but at the same time, we wanted to bring as much sensitivity to the topic as possible. But when we finished that, we premiered that in January of this year. And a shortly after that, I, I started uh, looking again for more uh, uh, production work. I did a little bit of freelance work on the side. I created a promotional piece for my acquire that I was an alumni of. And uh, from these pieces, the, especially the Anik one, the, um, uh, the Holocaust piece and the choir piece, I ended up creating a portfolio that uh, all students who are going into film and video must do. <laughs> and uh, I was able to, to
really wonderful opportunity to come and, and, and apply here, and it worked out really wonderfully in the end. And uh, I, this was my original place that I applied, actually. I, I'm very glad to have gone to St. Clair State University, and I'm very proud of that, but you know, I'm very glad to think that I could be working at a place, going to school in a place, and also uh, kind of living in this area. So it's, uh, it's really been a wonderful opportunity, and I hope that uh, with, with uh, media services specifically, we're now concentrating on things like production and the emphasis that we can make with uh, trying to bring students into that in an academic way. So, I mean, we've created some productions in, the, in just uh, in the last couple months, including things like the St. John's Bible and the 50th anniversary of the uh, Abbey Church and things like that that really have some gravity to them. And if you, you, know, if you want to be involved with things like that, that we can uh, make arrangements so that you can get that experience, create those pieces, put them on your portfolio. And along with that, we also have uh, Bernard Ferguson here who works with us in media services. He's also the general manager for Channel 8 which is uh, your campus television station. That's one of those opportunities that if you're going into film and video, or film and uh, uh, video production, you have to go and meet him and talk to him, so. <laughs> but uh, between uh, the student side of things and the media services side of things, we're very much so here to serve the students first and foremost. So um, if we can offer those opportunities to you, please uh, come and uh, knock on our door and we'll see if we can't make something happen uh, so that we can help you leave the university with a really strong portfolio. So um, I believe at this time we're supposed to open it to questions. I was just going to say that's great because when we were in college, we didn't have that. We, didn't have that. <laughs> we started we Channel 8. When I was in college, we did a few things. We just started it, and it hadn't. But I worked. I actually went and took classes. I, I did UTVS when I was in college. Yeah, because they have reciprocity with St. Ben's and St. Cloud. So, yeah. You technically don't have to be a student at St. Cloud State to uh, to be involved with UTVS, which is very nice, actually. So. And I would second that when he said <laughs> UTVS being like very well regarded as a very like like if you can be involved in it. I mean, you're getting the best education you can here, but it's another thing that's close. Like, as far as in the media community, it's very, very well regarded um, for student television. So, but that's great. I think that's awesome, and that's such a good point. Like, you know, Justine talked about being involved in the record. I wrote for the record. I did the radio station because I was like, and all those things are, anything's good because it all gives you experience. So, sorry. That was my addition. Now it's time for you to ask questions. Do you want to ask someone specific? Do you want to ask someone specifically? Um, how about Christine? All right, I'm just. Gonna... Uh, the question was, um, what were employers looking for in terms of interviews um, right out of college? Um, you know, when you're coming right out of college, they're going to look at your resume. They're going to look at your education. Um, they're going to look at your experience in television, especially um, experience is everything. So um, if you don't have a ton of video experience or on-camera experience, if you're trying to get a job as a reporter, you're not going to get called back for a second interview. So you need to really research your potential job before you send that resume and make sure you tailor the resume to make it Make you put your put yourself forward in the best light um, to get that first interview. Um, I guess I I remember bringing my articles from the record um, because my first job was a, a writing job at Conus Communications, and it, even though it was mostly copy that was given to me, I had to and I learned a lot on the job. They liked the fact that I had a communication degree, so. Um, as I said, I mean, you, you have to change your resume for the job. You don't just send out a, a the same resume to every employer because it's, it's going to get sent to the bottom of the pile. You need to really make yourself stand out and to even just get that first interview. I would add to that. So as in my job, um, what I do is I actually, I'm, I'm actually hiring right now. I'm in the process of interviewing people. I had an interview today. That's why I was running late. Um, so I would say, like, when I'm interviewing someone, I'm looking that they can speak to what's on their resume. So don't just put stuff on there that you don't want to talk about. Because sometimes people put stuff, they'll be like, oh, I didn't really want 
well, I didn't really like that job. I don't know why I put that on there. And I'm like, well, you put it on your resume, you know? So for real, I'm, you know, so stuff you want to speak to. Um, I think having, knowing, like Justine said, knowing what position you're applying for. I think that's one thing. I want people that are passionate about the company that, you know, the Twin Cities Live, for example. So people that come and they're like, yeah, I really haven't seen the show. I'm like, okay, you're never going to get this job. Because really, I'll have people that say, I've never seen the show. And I'm like, it's online. Look, like, though, you know, I don't care if you live in LA. It's online. Like, you could have looked it up. I would have looked it up if I was interviewing. So I would just say, knowing what you're applying for, being confident in the experience you have. Because you can't change that. And if it's not the right job for you, then it's not meant to be. Like, you can't make up stuff and be like... You know, so just know what you, be confident about what you have to sell and know what the experiences that you did, you know, you may not have five years experience and this probably isn't the job for you, but they might take a chance on you. And I've had people that I've interviewed and literally been like, you're awesome, but not for this job. And I actually hired someone for an associate producer job, called her back and said, Hey, come in and interview for this. You'd be really good at this. And now she's doing a great job as our associate producer. So and I've had the same thing happen to me before where I've been turned down for a job because I'm not, don't have maybe have the experience they want. And then they call you back for a different job. So just be honest and, and really sell what you have on that resume and be ready to talk about it is what I would say. The one thing I would add is uh, when I was uh, in PR, I, I'd get hundreds of, of resumes a week. Um, and you just, you know, you, like Justine said, you, there, there's a pile uh, and you, you you have to you have got to distinguish yourself from from the pile. It's really really important because there, there's there's so many people that want the, the the job that you want. You're not the only one. Um, baseball it, it was a little unique because everybody wants to work in sports. Um, so that's that's that may not apply to to everyone here. The one thing I will say is that uh, when I when I graduated in 1988, I, I got my degree in English with a minor in communications, and internships were were not big then. I mean, no, nobody interned. You you you, you interned. You did some little intern, some CPA. Uh, if you're accounting, you might do some internships, but for certain specific fields, interning right now is you can't you cannot not do it. You have to do it. You just can't get away, and I and I you tell I'm telling you I didn't intern, I got lucky, um, but you have to intern, and then when you get to that interview, you you know your stuff. You got to know your stuff. I mean, I've I've literally interned people or interviewed people who had great resumes, um, you know, everything I was looking for, and got them into a room and asked them three baseball questions, and they couldn't they couldn't answer one of the baseball questions. Well, you know, next. Yeah, it's it's you, interning is huge, and be, and be and, and you have to be specific for that job. If you know know something, like Amanda said, if if you're in, if you're if you're going to go for a job for Twin Cities Live, at least see the show more than once. Yeah, yeah, I would I would throw in interning is is huge. Um, it was never even offered, um, and I don't know how big it is offered anymore right now in the communication department. I, we've had a few St. Ben's interns um, at CARE, but I've called and s asked professors, you know, send me some students because we need interns. And, and I was never offered that opportunity. And it is an amazing opportunity to learn and really under see, see what the industry is about before you decide whether or not you want to pursue it as a career. Um, but be knowledgeable. Don't show up and, um, you know, walk up to Julie Nelson and say, what's your name? You know what I mean? Um, it, it's, yeah, just, just kind of do your homework a little bit um, and, and know at least what shows are and who the talent is, and then you can learn everything else on the job. I mean, you're there to learn, and it, it is a great opportunity. You should definitely look for, and if it's not immediately offered to you and you want to do it, pursue it. The other thing I always say to people is that people always say, well, there's only two internships at CARE, and there's only two internships at CCO, and there's only two internships at KSTP. And there is only, and they're really competitive. I mean, they are. But 
like it doesn't like get an internship with creative memories. I know offers media internships and you know what? They're letting people do stuff on there. Everyone's looking for people that are young and that want to do video and web content. And you can turn an internship into a valuable experience. Like, and that's the thing. My first internship was not at care 11, even though I had a family friend that worked at care 11, I still didn't get the internship at care 11. My first internship was with like I said, like a marketing, basically like a nonprofit. But I was like, do you guys want to put video on your website? I'll be in front of the camera. I'll do this. Like, and I just figured it out. And I decided, I knew I wanted to do something in media. And so I tailored my internship towards that. And I was like, I'll write press releases because that's what I want to do. I want to know how to write a press release. And so I think like, don't be so intimidated. People are like, how am I going to get this six really coveted internships? There's not just six. And same thing goes with people that, you know, people that work in management and they're like, I didn't get the target internship. I'm never going to be successful. For real. I've heard that. And I'm like, really? Really? You think the only six people that work for Target are successful? Like, you might get a better experience working at the, you know, at the local company that has 10 people because you're going to get, but be, know what you want. Like, what kind of experience do I want to gain? What do I feel like I'm not getting completely, you know, or what do I want to do more that I'm doing in my classes I'd like to do more in a practical setting. So just don't be intimidated by the word internship because you can turn a lot of experiences into valuable internships, even in media. Because now we're seeing non-traditional paths that people aren't just going small market here and here. They're working and developing their own websites and develop and writing for their own blogs. And we're hiring people that are, it's so different than it was even five years ago. So I think that's exciting for you guys because you can get that experience without having to necessarily go one direction, but you got to kind of make it your own. You got to work at it. So I just want, I just want to add one last thing. <clears throat> uh, and I can't, uh, I can't speak to CARE or KSTP, but internships are, I mean, the, the, it's not necessarily the work you think that it is. And uh, what will take you from an internship to a full-time job is what you do for your internship. I've, I've had interns that all they did was cop, make copies. Um, I when I did the internship at the National Sports Center, I, you know, I delivered stuff. It's... You have to you have to take take that foot in the door and try to make something out of it, and that's something you can put on your resume and take to the job. And if if, if it's not a different job, it could be the job in that organization or that company. If you s s separate yourself from other interns, then you're, you're definitely going to the head of the class. But believe me, if you, you get you get you get that internship and you're all excited and hey, I got to I finally got an internship, and then you sit there and you know and do nothing and run copies and just do it just do the manual labor that they tell you to do and not kind of put it forward any, any effort it's not going to take you anywhere it would be a waste of your time i don't know i and sorry. it's a waste of your employer's time yeah. I was just going to mention too that as far as the internships are concerned, I know at least graduating a couple of years ago that it became so competitive that uh there, there came a point where you could apply for many, many different interns, especially in things you might be interested in, and ultimately be told, oh, you don't have any experience. Why would you become an intern? Well, I don't have any, you know, any experience because I haven't had an internship. You have to, I think, at some respect, in some respect, and I, and I did this, I think, with the majority of the first projects I worked on, be willing to work for free. And in some respects, find something that you're very passionate about and try to, in some way, attach what you're interested in doing into that field in the first place. So it makes it so that you can try to make those skills uh, something that you hone while you're working in what you want to be doing, even if you're not being paid to do it. Ultimately, your finished product will speak for itself, regardless of how much you were paid to do to make it. Um, I think that that ultimately was very helpful for a fair amount of the students that I've worked with uh, while I was at St. Cloud, and I know that that is something that's very evident with uh, the students here as well. We're in the process right now of developing, in, uh, developing internships uh, for um, media services because we do have some higher end production work that we are now trying to, to tr trying to do in a more um, uh, more common, more uh, reoccurring way. So uh, that would be something that, again, if, if you're willing to, to put in the time, put in the effort, be reliable, and, and not necessarily see it as something, well, this is where you're going to make money or this is, is, is a formal internship, they do still, I think, translate onto a resume or a portfolio for that matter. You hit on something really good there, too. You aren't going to make any money. <laughs> Justine said it. We do pay at KSTP. We pay minimum wage because the Hubbards believe that 
you should be an employee because then we can hold you to different standards. No, um, we do, which is great because we pay for your gas. And that's basically what I tell interns. Like, we pay for your gas, but that's it. Um, but like I said, you're not going to make any money in TV or film right away or media or any of it. You're just not. You're not going to, you're going to be making less money than your friends graduating from St. John St. Ben's. I'm just going to say that. You're going to. But you're going to have great experiences. You're going to have great stories. You're going to make amazing relationships and eventually, you know, hopefully, you know, your, your, the money will come is that you're able to, I mean, still none of us here, I'm guessing, I, I, unless I need a new job are making a lot of money, but it's, you know, it's, we have jobs that we I can tell by everyone talking that are so passionate about our jobs and like we go to work and we're doing something we love. I literally say like my hobby is making TV and I get to do that every day. Like, yeah, there's days where I hate it, but just be ready for that. Like, you're not going to make any money, and you're you have to make sacrifices. And the best things in life come with sacrifices. So, um, yeah, internships. I worked for three years at Care Eleven for no money. The first job they offered me was basically no money <laughs> either. So it's it's that's just what it is. So. I've taken pay cuts. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, and be ready to exactly be ready to move the economy, ba- be, not yeah. because of performance. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you guys have more questions? Sorry, we talk a lot. What would a typical day in our field be like? Well, mine is going to be completely different from from because uh, I don't I, I'm not as I'm not the production and, and that this this is a good t- uh, discussion for for that. But what I do is I I, I get to the ballpark um, uh, relatively early, about I don't know noon, twelve thirty. <laughs> I work till late, though. Um, and I'll, uh, I have to start preparing for the game. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll look at video. I'll look at uh, the opposing pitcher. I'll look at uh, some opposing hitters, to try to find their weaknesses, try to find anything that will give us an edge. Um, I, I do that and, you know, try to re- put it in report form so that, that I can give it to the players and the coaches so that they might feel like there's an edge. Um, I, the majority of the day, I'm actually gathering reports, whether it's something that I do or or from where I get it from my software system or I get it from an outside source. Um, I I gather the information and and basically give it to give it to them to uh, dissect. Um, you know, it's it, it it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's it's a uh, it's it takes up most of my day up until game time. Um, <clears throat> approximately about an hour. That's when I'm st- about before game time. That's when I'm I'm really getting ready for the game, and that's when I'm starting to prepare our software system um, and all the cameras and everything to to be able to capture the video so that the players can benefit from it. Um, and then during the game, I'm charting every pitch uh, from a from a not as a scout, but just as a, as an information gatherer. So uh, if, you know if if Carl Pavano's pitching. I'm 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 watching him, and and di- and wherever the pitch goes, that's where I'm putting whatever type of pitch it is, velocity, uh, result, um, and basically that that information goes into a software system and it spits it out so that they can see it. Uh, then post game, um, it's just some wrap wrap up stuff and get something to eat and go home about 11:30, 12 o'clock at night. Um, typical day for me. Um, my work day is about 8.30 to 4.30, so I have Monday through Friday. I, I get to work, and uh, first thing I do is go through all my emails and see if there's anything pertinent that I need to be. Um, if I have guests on my show booked that have questions that need to know what time they need to be there, if they have last-minute um, inquiries that, uh, that need to be addressed, why do I do that? Um, then I um, look through the Star Tribune online, and I check the Minnesota State wires, and um, the NBC wires see what stories are coming down on those um, during the day in CNN. And then we have a morning meeting, a news gathering meeting at 9.30 in which all the reporters and all the producers and management um, come together and pitch their story ideas for the day. Some of it is stuff that is um, obvious if there's a major crime or a major court case, um, 
for example, it's this, the Viking Stadium stuff. There was new stuff on that today. Um, if, if those are things that we know are happening, we, um, and then we know that we want to cover them with a reporter, um, we send the reporters out on those assignments. And then um, what it, you know, I also check Facebook um, to see what my friends and what other people are talking about, if there's any, anything good. Like um, there are some wild turkeys and some you know, terrorizing some Edina neighborhood on somebody's Facebook page. So I'm like, oh my God, this is really funny. And we did that story today. You know what I mean? So um, things, things like that. So we, we decide what, what each reporter is going to do, um, who's assigned photographers, who's not. And then we split up the assignments between the 4, 5, and 6 o'clock newscasts. And the, six, the 5 and 6 get a lot more content um, because they have more content to fill. They don't have lifestyle segments like I do. So I usually just get one reporter piece, or maybe not even. Um, I might just be lucky enough to get a reporter to write a VOSAT for me, and um, that might be it. After that, um, I go downstairs and I stack my show. I put in every story, um, decide which order it goes in. I block out um, the segments, so decide which anchor gets which segment and, and how that will flow. And then I write, and I write until the show is done. And in the middle of it, I might be booking um, things for the next week or the next month, um, returning emails and phone calls, and just kind of juggling that way. Um, at 3.50, or on print scripts for the anchors, at 3.55, I go into the, the control room, and then I watch my show executed on air. Um, I have to communicate with the director as to um, where things need to be, because the the set, there's different parts of the set, and each segment might, you know, one might be in the kitchen, one might be in the main set, one might be in um, what we call the, the demiplex, or one might be out in, in, the, uh, in the backyard, you know what I mean? And all those things have to be very clearly formatted so that everyone that is working on the show is on the same page and knows where everyone needs to be at any given time. And um, if I've got a live shot, which is a reporter out in the field, um, I'm speaking to them while I'm in the booth, as well as timing out weather. And if the show is getting long, I have to decide what to drop or how to make the show end on time. So it's just a lot of um, juggling and a lot of um, balls in the air. And you just uh, you get it done at 4, 4.30. My show's done. And I go home. I start it all over the next day. It's never the same two days in a row. Every day is always different. Even if the show goes to hell, you get to start over completely new the next day, and that's the best part about it, is that it's always new, it's always different. I've never written the same story twice, so. You go. No, I'm good. You go. Um, well, mine is a little different since I'm mostly academic or academic service, but uh, I get a, an 8 to 4.30 kind of shift on Monday through Fridays. But there are occasional times where... Uh, there are media services uh, that are required for an evening event. In fact, you know, we have uh, filming in the back right now that's happening from media services. Uh, there are different events where we'll, we'll do setups, we'll do um, production. Uh, so as far as um, it, how it probably divided into the academic portion, the technical portion, and uh, the technical services portion, and then production so, uh, portion. So there will be a portion of my day that I'm, I'm delegating things out to student employees, portion of the day that will be uh, um, ultimately spending time either um, managing or creating setups for different events, um, duplicating different types of media, converting different types of media, and ultimately there is a portion too where we're able to do production. Uh, we're in the process right now of creating everything from like a Christmas card for the university for a, a, a video for the John Gallardia Award that's coming up. Um, uh, SOT has theology days coming up. There's videos. There's just a, there's always something new going on, which is really actually quite fun about I think video production in general, or for that matter, um, working in media because it's constantly changing, and along with it, the continuity is something where you you never know exactly what you're going to be creating or or working with or working on, and uh, that makes it actually quite exciting. Um, so. Um, that's right now, at least, how I've come to understand the days. I know there are certain portions of the year that it's busy on campus, but it's busy in media services. But then there are times where we are able to have a little bit more free time to play and maybe, uh, well, not play, but work on projects that are, are a little bit more of a, uh, less of a bind as far as time constraint is concerned. Working in, in, in broadcast production, broadcast media, I mean, it's, it's 
to the moment, to the second, to the minute. It, it, it's a type of stress that while I miss and, and, and did enjoy and there's a thrill and a rush about it, there's something also kind of nice about <laughs> having a, a, a level of uh, margin of error. So. Um, but that, uh, that's what I've come to understand, at least, of my day in, in, in some respect. It is very different. I think media, that is a, a reoccurring theme. Every day is different. And it's actually a really wonderful blessing, because I don't think you, you get stuck in the monotony of uh, expecting exactly what's going to happen. So, uh, go ahead. Totally. OK, so my typical day, like I would kind of going to repeat a lot of the stuff that they did, so I'm trying to think. Um, so I get in between eight and nine, depending on the day, depending on what we have going on or what happened the night before or what we have. Um, ours is a little different. Like I did the new news thing and it's very like where it's like you have that day, you kind of focus on what's going to happen that day. We know what we're going to do. Um, we plan our shows two weeks out. So we kind of know we might have a, uh, something drop or like a guest not show up or we might have a story not really go the way we liked it. So, so we might throw it out or we might see the story that we want to go longer. And so... So I get in and I check emails and do that kind of thing and answer phone, you know, and a lot of what I do as being a manager is people coming into my office saying, what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about this? Like, what's what about this? So literally, I think that's like the first hour and a half I'm there is just answering questions and trying to like keep everybody like, here's what we're going to do today. And then we have a meeting at 1030 with our director of our show and our senior producer who um, is in the control room, like Justine timing, talking to the live shots. And our director is the person that's actually making it happen on TV. I always say the director takes the producer's vision and makes it happen. Um, so he's calling the camera shots live. He's working with the crew. So we're meeting with him, our talent, which is our hosts, so John Hansen and Elizabeth Reese, so they know what's going on. Our reporter to talk about what she's got going on. Our producers, segment producers, who are producing the content that you see that's in studio or they might have other video components. And then our senior producer. And so we're all getting on the same page saying, what's happening today? And at that meeting, that might be, might go 10 minutes, it might go an hour. Kind of depends on the day and what we have going on. Um, and it's just, you know, once we leave there, we kind of know this is the plan for the show at 3 o'clock. Um, then after that, I mean, I'm checking the show from time to time when I have time. Otherwise, I'm sometimes I'm meeting with people that want to do stuff in January or in next year. Like right now, I'm actually meeting with someone that, that we're working on a promotion for the state fair for next year. I mean, it's like crazy, like some of it. So my job is a little different, but I, I still am involved in the day to day. But every day is really different. Um, and then I try, I mean, I Ultimately, I try to be there, you know, 90% of the time from 2.30 on to either be down in the studio with John Elizabeth or watching the show from my office and then giving them feedback. And then 4.30, we have a post meeting and we sit and we talk about the show. We watch the show sometimes. If something went wrong, we always watch the show and they hate that. And then we have to say, look what you did wrong. That's the other thing about TV. You make a mistake, it doesn't go away. You get to watch it again and again and again. So, um, and then we talk about tomorrow's show and what we're going to do. And then we do do like meetings, like twice a week, we do a meeting at eight 30 in the morning. So tomorrow morning we have our, our editorial meeting, similar to what Justine was saying that they do every day. We do once a week, but it's like an hour and a half and everybody has to bring three story ideas. So three things they think, and it's not like, oh, I think we should do a cooking segment on lasagna. Cause that's like not a story idea. It's like, I found this chef that's amazing and he makes the best lasagna and I want to bring him on and have him. So you have to find like, so you have to dig and find those and you have to pitch it to me and to our senior producer and to our hosts. And then we kind of, so that's kind of how we come up with content. A lot of people ask that. They're like, how do you come up with stuff? And a lot of it's just like Justine said, it's like, we see stuff you wrote on Facebook or that on Twitter. We all follow Twitter. Or we see stuff in, and we're like, we could do that on our show. We watch all the national shows. Um, so it's kind of different every day, but it's fun. So. Well, right before I was came here, I met with my, I was actually a communications major and I was a management major as well. Um, and I met with my study abroad professor who is Paul Marsnick. He's um, entrepreneurship. And I mean, entrepreneurship was a great class for me to have in starting, trying to start a show and like from nothing. So 
Absolutely. But I think like, I'll, I always tell people like, and you're going to be, especially if you go into TV journalism, you're going to be kind of up against these like J schools that are like, I have a degree from the U of M or I have a degree from Missouri and it's the best school ever. And they are all wonderful schools. I'm not, and you're going to be going, I have the St. Ben's degree that's liberal arts and what, did, you know, but I always say, I learned a little bit of everything. I learned how to be a good writer. I learned how to how to be able to meet people and make and be re, you know have relationships with people and be able to to network and i think that that goes a long way so i don't know if there's one class that i necessarily would say take that class and that's that you're in but i think the whole process kind of makes you a well-rounded individual and someone that's marketable and able to you know go out in the workforce and and be you know a hard-working trainable someone that can learn you know employee so well, I would say that I, mean, I got my degree in English with a minor in communications because St. John's, St. Ben's didn't have a major in 1988. That was a minor. Um, you know, uh, you're, this is a liberal, liberal arts university. It, it, the greatest thing about this place is that you, it teaches you to think clearly, speak clearly, and write clearly. And if you can do those three things, you're, you're way ahead of everybody else. I mean, I, I firmly believe that. I mean, when, I, when I'm looking for, when I was looking for people uh, to hire, I wanted to know if they could t talk. If they couldn't talk, if they had no personality, that, you know, that, 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 was a, that was a red flag. If they, could, if they could speak and they could think for themselves and, and write pretty good, then, they, you know. So if you can do those three things and you, you, that's what you're learning here, then, then I, I think you'd be fine. Absolutely um, agree with that. Um, it, this, you're going to get a well-rounded education here. You're not going to get the specialized, um, you know, you're not going to get a journalism degree here. Um, when I was a junior and I decided that I wanted to go into journalism, I had to make the decision whether or not to stay here or to transfer to St. Cloud State and, and get the journalism degree and, and work in um, try to put a tape together and be on TV, be a reporter. And I made the decision, decision to stay here, um, not only because it was going to add money and time on to my college path, but because um, I knew I was getting an excellent education here. And when, you, when it comes to television, you just need to get that first job. And once you get that first job, everything goes on that. They don't even, if, if I were to write a resume now, I wouldn't even put my education on is the first thing. It would be way lower. You put all your experience first because that's just the way it is in this, uh, in this business. Um, so, yeah, media writing. I did learn how to write a press release here, and I had never done that before. Um, so that was a good one to take. And, and you should, if you, I mean, writing clearly, thinking clearly, speaking clearly, all very important things. And um, being able to string a few sentences together and make people understand them and be interesting um, is a good skill to have. Again, too, I, I think uh, they know it very well that realistically, uh, to be involved in media, I think uh, the greatest uh, aspect of it is the fact that it's it's really a field of generalists. Um, it's a very interdisciplinary field, and the fact that it, it's ultimately media is mediums. It's uh, the fact that every single person uh, would bring a different palette to the table in that respect. So the production skills, uh, they come. The, uh, the technical skills, they come. But the creativity can't be fabricated. You have to, in some respects, be able to, to take that uh, liberal arts education that you're getting here and recognize that the creativity is, is really, and, and the ability to think and write and, and uh, speak clearly are those things that ultimately you're, you're honing that which makes you, you a very good candidate for that, in that respect. Um, to be a generalist, I think, is going to make it so that you can speak to any topic and speak to any field or ultimately write or, or do video production for any field. And, and me too, I was, I was an English major. I'm an English major, and then mass communication was a major I got a little bit later on. It was a double major. But, uh, you know, to tell you the truth, when I was asked, well, how, how, does, uh, how do you do editing? And I said, well, I think about it in English terms. I think about it as poetry. And that, that might sound kind of vernacular, but, I mean, uh, you, you sit there and you, you dissect meaning and, and phrase work and try to decide where something belongs, or where silence is supposed to be there, where, where it's not. And that's so much of what editing is at any level, whether it's video production, whether it's, it's writing, whether it's speaking. And so because of that, I think uh, being a generalist is ultimately what it comes down to.
learn the skills, research the, the positions, understand what, you know, press release, understand the video production part of it, but it will, it, it comes in time. The, the value here is really, truly the liberal arts, I think. Come to media services and <laughs> as much experience as possible. Create either uh, an online presence or a demo reel that you would either, again, have online or a DVD. Uh, that's speaking from a video production standpoint. I think broadcasting might have a different preference. But uh, as e anything you've worked on, uh, specify you know kind of what you did, show clippets, snippets, highlights from that, and basically make it very apparent so that that person who's going to sit down and give you about 10 seconds of their time, maybe less, is going to sit and watch all 30 seconds of what you have to say. You drag on, I think that uh, we watched quite a few demo reels at times that were at St. Cloud State, and it's a very um, positive thing and, and difficult at times to sit there and condense everything that you care about and, and are into <laughs> a very a small portion, but it, uh, as far as a, a portfolio and a demo reel is concerned, I think that that's really the best bet to go as far as production is concerned nowadays. But I'd go to yeah, I think figure out what you want to do and then figure out if you want to go into print, then have some experience with the record. But even if you want to do broadcast, if you want to work in news, work on the record and get some experience. And like I said, have that resume with experiences you can talk about. The other thing that we haven't talked about at all, but that I would just tell you that is another thing you can be investing in right now is developing a network of mentors and people around you that because that's just as much as the portfolio because a mentor is going to give you more than 30 seconds to look at your reel I actually just had a St. Penn student that I talked to on the way up that sent me her demo reel she's out in Colorado and she's like do we take a look at it I'm like yeah of course and she doesn't want a job for me she doesn't want anything she just wants my feedback and Someday I might want her, and I mean, I've asked her, like, what do you think of the show? You watch the show, what do you think? So it's developing those relationships, I think, is something you can also do that's so valuable. Like, find somebody that you click with, or go and do a job shadow. I mean, it doesn't have to be a formal internship either. Like, I let students come all the time and, like, come with us for a day, see what you think. Like, if you like it, great. If you don't, you know, like, then you're going to know, like, you don't want an internship here. So I think developing, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but friendships not just like people you're going to use to get a job, but actual people. Because, I mean, I still have people that I, when I was in St. Ben's, and I worked in the CRC, so I have all these, I learned all this from Mary, like, you know, develop these networking. And at the time I was like, yeah, I need all these mentors and stuff. And the mentors are still, you know, my mentor was Diana Pierce. And the first day Twin Cities Live launched, works on a different network, she sent me roses to my office saying, congratulations. Like, that to me was like, that's because it's a friendship. It's not because we work, we just work in the field and we can appreciate each other. So I think those people are really important and those keep you going when it, when, when sometimes it sucks, you know, so. I don't, I don't have anything to add than that they didn't. Um, just if you're, if you're looking for a job in television and you want to be on television reporting, or if you want to be a photographer, or if you want to be a producer, it, that what you put on your your tape or your DVD is going to be different. Um, as a producer, I I had to put um, a newscast on it, and I had to put the best newscast that I could possibly put together on it. And it may not have been the newscast that aired that day. It may be um, pieces of different things that I had an anchor uh, read for me and do that way. But if you want to be a reporter, um, it's got to be. It's got to be bright. It's got to show the, the very best work that you can possibly do. It's got to move. It's got to be fast. It's got to be interesting. Um, and media services would be the best, um, the best outlet for you to, to take advantage of because we did not have that when I was here. Yeah, there's really, from a video standpoint, I really can't speak as well as these other three people up here. But the one thing I would, advice I would give is that if, if, when you're getting close to thinking of what you want to do and uh, you have some specific jobs that you're looking for, then I would do a lot of research to find out what that job entails. Um, I mean, specific stuff. It could be, you know, you see you see things now, you say you need to be proficient in Excel or Word or whatever, but there's always something more that, that a certain departments or certain people do that are, are a little different from everyone else. And if you can find out what that is and be good at it, 
you've 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 really t you've really taken a step forward or to the top of the, the class. I think I, I, an example of, for me personally was when I wanted to get into PR. Um, the, the, the depart their department was a kind of a uh, we we, we uh, produced a, a media guide every year and we were doing it in house. So it was a lot of graphic design. And when they were looking for people, they were looking for people who were good in certain software. And it was real specific software. But well, what I did was I knew that because I was working in the mailroom, and I went out and bought the software and just basically trained myself on how to use that software. So when I got in there, I, was, I had a leg up on everybody. So I, that's a little example. But if you can if you can get some, you can find an edge. You know, I, I'd go for it. to wrap up um, thank you guys so much for coming and thank you guys for coming um, feel free to stay after and ask the alumni questions um, and then if you want any more information we do have the career expo next Wednesday I believe the 9th I'm sure we've been promoting it a lot but um, feel free to stay after and ask us any questions the only thing I want to say is just find something that you love to do and you'll be happy don't don't settle do what you want to do, the money will come.